Hi, my name is Shah Nawaz. In this lecture, we are going to study nil radicals. Uh, in last lecture, we introduced the local rings. Uh, by a local ring, we mean a ring A having uh, exactly one maximal ideal, say M. Uh, then such rings are called local rings. For example, if we look at fields, then field uh, is a local ring since the zero ideal is the only maximal ideal in F. Uh, in F. So let us uh, give a non-trivial example of a local ring. So let a b the set of all rationals uh, with odd denominator i.e. this a consists of those rational numbers uh, for which the denominator q is odd i.e. 2 does not divide q then we claim this a is a local ring then a is a local ring so first of all um, it is an easy uh, exercise to prove a is a ring actually it is a subring of q so this is contained in q so this is a subring of q <coughs> uh, one can note uh, here that this set is closed under addition because uh, sum of two rational numbers with odd denominator is a rational number which is again uh, having odd denominator uh, so let us consider a, a set so let so if we look at uh, this set uh, uh, then an element uh, say p by q in a uh, is a non unit uh, if and only if so if we look at the element p by q suppose p by q is in uh, a then we know that uh, the unit uh, p by q is unit if there is some rational number say q by p such that their product is one now this element uh, will be uh, here if this p is denominator so the units in a are all uh, elements here which have uh, uh, odd numerator as well so if we look at the non units then the non units in a are those uh, rationals in this set a having even uh, numerator uh, So and so let us so solve this. So observe that an element say M by N is a non Uh, unit in A precisely when this M is even i.e. when 2 divided M so let now let us consider the set of all units in A so let M be the set of all uh, non units in A uh, 
uh, that means uh, this m consists of numbers of the form uh, having uh, m consists elements in a which have uh, even a numerator so that will be a multiple of 2 so divided by n where 2 doesn't divide n so this is obviously uh, a subset in a so now we are going to prove this m is ideal and clearly m is an ideal in a and since for let us take two elements here for uh, two r by s and two u by v in m two r by s plus two u by v which is two times uh, R V plus S U upon U V. Note that this S and V, sorry, this is S and V. Note that S and V they are um, both odd, so their product is odd as well. And here this is the multiple of two, so it is an even number. So this belongs to M. And for any element say p by q in uh, a and 2r by s in m so their product is uh, 2 times p r by q s so numerator being even and denominator being odd so this is an element of m so hence M is an ideal. Now, now, so this is an ideal. Now it uh, remains to prove that M is the only maximal ideal in uh, R. Now let us uh, we know that um, if M is an ideal. Uh, in a ring a with the property that every element in the set a minus m is a unit then m is the only maximal ideal in a i is the local ring so uh, if we look at this set here so since uh, for any x in the set a minus m so that means an element which is in a but not in m i mean uh, the element x is such that having both uh, odd uh, numerator as well as denominator so every element in this set is a unit so for any x in the set a minus m is a unit we have m the only maximal ideal in a so this is called uh, this is the non trivial example of a local ring now let us move to nil radicals so we had this uh, proposition so this set let us note mm, this set by eta of a of all nil potent elements in a uh, ring a 
so a is the ring and n is the set of all nil potent elements so this is an ideal in a and a mod it of a has no non zero nil potents has no non zero nil potent element let us prove this so so let us pick any element in uh, n so let x belongs to it of a be any element mm, that means then x to the power n is 0 for some n in n this is the definition of a nil potent element uh, therefore uh, for any say a in a we have a x power n which is equal to a power n x power n so now x power n being equal to zero so this is equal to zero that means this a x is also nil potent so we have a x is in eta of n that means this set is closed under uh, external multiplication now let us uh, prove it is closed under addition now let x and y be two elements in uh, this set then there exists say n and m in n such that x to the power m is 0 and x to the power n is 0 now we had to prove uh, x plus y is in um, it of a i mean we had to prove x plus y power some uh, natural number is 0 so now let us look at this element x plus y to the power say m plus n minus 1 so using binomial theorem this is say this is x to the power r y to the power m plus n minus 1 minus r so it is like this where this r runs from 0 to m plus n minus 1 now if we prove that each term in this sum is 0 then this left hand side is also 0 now let us look at the uh, term x power r y let us look at this term x power r y power m plus n minus 1 minus r so if uh, so there are two conditions either r is bigger or equal to m or r is less than m so these are the only two conditions so if uh, let us pick this condition so if r is bigger or equal to m then x to the power r y to the power m plus n minus r sorry n minus 1 minus r so this term is going to be equal to 0 since uh, the index of nil potency of x is m and r succeeds m so this term has to be 0 since x power r is 0 so this is 0 
otherwise let r is less than m so if r is less than m that means then m plus n minus 1 power r sorry minus r so here r is less than m so this is bigger than m plus n minus 1 minus m that is uh, or which is equal to, which is equal to so the, this term he, here this is equal to m plus n minus 1 that means this sorry this is equal to so m and m goes this is equal to n minus 1 now if this term is uh, bigger than n minus 1 that means this term is bigger or equal to n that is m plus n minus 1 minus r this is bigger or equal to n now this term being strictly bigger than n minus 1 so this is e bigger or equal to n that means uh, and hence Uh, x to the power r y to the power m plus n minus 1 minus r is again 0 therefore x plus y power m plus n minus 1 is 0 and hence uh, this x plus y is in the set n a this proves that n a is the ideal in a ie the set of all nil potent elements in a ring forms an ideal now we have to prove the set a mod eta of a has no non-zero nil potent mm, this contains no non-zero nil potent so uh, that is uh, we have to prove the only non potent uh, element in this set is the zero element only so let so we have to prove the nil radical of uh, the set a mod n of a is just the singleton zero bar that is what we had to prove so we are going to pick any element in the nil radical of the set so let uh, x bar belongs to the nil radical of a mod nil radical of this set so we uh, we are going to prove this x bar is zero bar so i e so so that is now this x bar is the element uh, of a mod eta of a so this x bar is going to look like uh, x plus uh, eta of a so this is uh, of this form where x is an element in a so that is so let us write this down here so let x plus eta of a which is equal to x bar be an element of the nil radical of a mod neta of a that is there exists some natural number positive natural number such that x bar power n is 0 bar which is the 
element 0 plus net of a or now x bar power n is simply x power n plus net of a is equal to net of a that is x power n is in the set e to of a now if this is the case if uh, x power n is in the set that means and uh, this is nil put in a hence x power n power k is 0 for some k bigger or bigger than 0 because or this x power <coughs> now if this is 0 that means this uh, this means that this or uh, x belongs to neta of a now if x belongs to neta of a this uh, implies x plus e to of a is e to of a or x bar is 0 bar so the only null potent element is of a mod neta is 0 now this set e to of a is called the nil radical of the ring a so this is the definition Uh, this set e of a is called the nil radical of a now there is this uh, alternative definition of a nil radical which is as follows mm, let us make this a uh, lemma So the nil radical of a ring A is the intersection of all prime ideals of the ring. The nil uh, radical of a ring A is the intersection of all prime ideals in A. So let us prove this. So let A be uh, any ring. Now by ring we mean a common ring with uh, the identity element. And mm, let delta consists uh, the set of all prime ideals in A. So delta consists P where P is a prime ideal in A. Now we have to prove we want to show that the nil radical of A is actually the intersection of all prime ideals in A. This is what we want to prove. So first one content mystery uh, is trivial i.e. the nil radical is always contained in the intersection of all prime ideals. Let us see how. So let x belongs to the nil radical of A. Mm, then there exists n in n such that x to the power n is 0. Now, intersection of I, uh, prime ideal is being uh, an ideal, so 0 has to be, uh, 0 must belong to the 
set because all prime ideals contain zero so their intersection contains zero as well that is and this zero is in the all prime ideals in other words x power n is um, belongs to the p for all p in delta now p being a prime and x power n being an element of p implies x times x power n minus 1 is in p so that is x times x power n minus 1 is in p so this implies either x is in p or x power n minus 1 is in p so one of them uh, has to belong to p because p is a prime ideal now if x is in p then we are done if not then x power n minus 1 is in p now if x power n minus 1 is in p then x times x power n minus 2 is in p so this implies so but x power n minus 1 belongs to p implies x times x power n minus 2 is in p so continuing this process continuing in this manner uh, we have x an element of p uh, for all p in delta therefore uh, this nil radical of a is contained in the intersection of all primes in a now to prove a reverse containment we have to prove every element in this set is in the nil radical or using the contrapositive way we have to prove if there is some element which is not in the nil radical of a then we have to prove it is uh, also not in this set so let us use this way so to prove intersection of all prime ideals p is contained in eta of a let um, a be an element which is in not in the nil radical i mean which is in the set a but not in the nil radical that means a is not a nil potent element so we uh, if we have to uh, if we prove that this a is not in this set then uh, our claim is done so that is a is not nil potent let us uh, consider the collection sigma so this is the collection of ideals i in a such that no power of a is in i so this is the collection uh, so this is the collection of all elements uh, this is the collection of all elements uh, all ideals in a whose such that no power of a is in i so we are going to order uh, this set sigma so we should note here since a is non nil potent so a power n is not zero so let us make it clear here so 
so this is for all n positive now one should note here that a is not nil potent so a power n is not equal to zero for all n positive that means a power n does not belong to zero ideal for all n positive that means this zero ideal is an element here so since a is not nil potent we have uh, the zero ideal belongs to this collection sigma so therefore the sigma is therefore sigma is non empty now order sigma by inclusion so we are going to put an order on sigma now obviously sigma is uh, a partial uh, partially ordered set now let us pick a chain so let uh, i alpha where alpha is in lambda be a chain in sigma and suppose j is the union of all i alphas where alpha is in lambda then as we had done uh, in the uh, pre uh, uh, earlier lecture we have uh, showed that this i and this is an ideal in j as well as an upper bound in, in j so note that j belongs to sigma and is upper bound of sigma so we are here uh, invoking the uh, zones lemma so therefore by zones lemma Uh, sigma has a maximal element say P so so if P is the maximal element uh, of Sigma that means a power n does not belongs to P because P being an element of Sigma implies no power of a is in p now if we prove that this p is prime we get a does not belong to p because this is the property of prime ideals if no power of a n is in p i mean if a dot a dot so on a is not in p then no a is in p now what do we have to prove we have um, we have picked an element in uh we have picked a here mm -hmm. we have we have picked a here uh in this set i mean we picked a such that a is not in n of a so if we prove a is not uh if we prove this P is a prime ideal and um, then A uh, will not belong to P and hence A does not belong to the intersection of prime ideals then we are done so now let us prove this P is a prime ideal so uh, this is our clam clam P is a prime ideal this is what clam let uh, now there are two ways to show p is uh, a prime ideal one is if x y is in p then we have to prove neither x is in p nor y is in p and the other uh, contrapositive way is that if we uh, show that for 
two elements x and y which are not in p if we show their product is also not in p then again p will be a prime ideal so let x and y does not belong to p so if uh, these elements does not belong to p then the ideals the idol generated by p and x and the idol generated by the elements of p and y uh, strictly contain p and they are not the elements of sigma because p is the maximum element there then the ideals strictly contain p and hence P X and mm, and hence the idol P X and P Y does not belong to sigma since P is a maximal element. In sigma. Now if these elements does not belong to the sigma that means uh, some power of a belong to these ideals then by definition of sigma uh, a power m belongs to this ideal and a power n belongs to the ideal generated by p and y because this is the definition of sigma so an element is in sigma if no power of a is in p uh, sorry in i and if this is not an element there then some power of a is in p so that means this implies Uh, a power m dot a power n which is the element a power m plus n so a power m and a power n this will be an element of the product of these two ideals so this is uh, contained in uh, the product of these two ideals which is the ideal generated by the elements of p and the element x times y now if this is the case this means uh, this means mm, so therefore now this ideal consists uh, in this contains uh, an element which is some power of a so therefore this ideal is not an element in sigma therefore p of x y is not in not an element in sigma now if this is the case but this ideal strictly contains p and p being a maximum ideal and knowing the fact this uh, idle is not there that means this uh, element x y is not in p hence x y is not an element in p if x y is an element of p then this idle is just the idle p but <coughs> we have proved this is not the element of sigma because it consists of some power of a hence uh, x y is not in P. Therefore, P is a prime ideal. Now, if P is a prime ideal and now if P is a prime ideal and A power N does not belongs to P implies A does not belongs to P. So therefore, 
a does not belong to p since no power of uh, no power of a is in p which is our hypothesis at the beginning so p being a maximal idle of sigma so no power of a is in p or so we or we can write here that uh, since p belongs to sigma now if a is not in p this means thus a is not in the intersection of all prime ideals so this proves our claim hence uh, the intersection of all prime ideals is contained in the nil radical of a so this proves that the nil radical of a is the intersection of all prime ideals